Hey everyone, it's Robin again from Man and Machine. Um, thanks for joining me today. It's another short video. Again, we're gonna focus on 3ds Max. We're gonna use 2022 for the purpose of today's video. Uh, and we're gonna look at fluid simulation. Now, fluid simulation inside of Max historically um, may be tricky to do, tricky with particles. Um, they've made it so much easier now for the past, what, three, four, maybe even five years. Um, the focus on, on getting a user to be able to create a fluid simulation, whether it's water, um, whether it's um, something that's a bit more clotty like uh, like blood or, or chocolate um, or whether it's something putty like like a foam or, or a toothpaste um, the ability to create these things now quickly and easily inside of Max um, is really fantastic so I wanted to show you and just talk you through not the, um, the the breadth of different options and settings that you've got but just how quickly we can get results um, and because of that literally we're going to come in and uh, let's just use our friend the teapot Let's place the teapot down. Um, let's create them quite big so that we can see what's going on. Um, maybe a radius of 50. We're gonna up the segments just because we can, 32. Just so we've got something that's smooth to react with the water um, or the fluid. And then we're gonna go zero, zero, zero to place him in the center. Um, now, I'm just gonna leave it exactly like that for the purpose of this. Go to create. Um, rather than standard primitives, we're going to draw some fluid and draw a liquid. Click and drag to place our emitter. If you hold and, and, and drag it allows you to change the size of the icon, the icon only, not the actual emitter. Um, so we're going to place this down. Again if you want to, if you've got a bit of OCD like me, you can get that to zero zero, but we want it certainly above um, our teapot. So um, let's go up to about 65, maybe about 100, maybe about 150. There we go. So that there's a bit of distance between the start of that emitter and the teapot. The emitter has a shape, um, so here we've got a sphere. We can change that to a box, or we can change that to a plane, or, or a custom shape if you wanted to. The sphere works well from my perspective here, but I am gonna up that to about 10, so we've got a larger piece of liquid hitting the top of this teapot. And to make things interesting, if I go into a top view, I'm gonna get this full on one of the creases here. So maybe let's get it to full um, just over the ridge of the teapot here, but towards the spout. From there, with this selected, I can specify an icon size, it doesn't affect the simulation at all. Um, but we're gonna click simulation view. From simulation view, we're gonna go into our, um, our liquid attributes, confirm my emitter size here, before adding a collider or any kill planes. I've only got one collider in this scene, which is my teapot. Um, goodness me, almost forgot to make that a nice man of machine orange, there we go. Um, so we've got one collider. We can have as many colliders as we want to, but in this case, we've got one, and it's the teapot. Um, we don't have any kill planes. We don't want to set up any masks for foaming, or we don't want to set up any guides or anything like that. So literally, we have placed some fluid, and we've selected a collision object. That could be a channel. That could be a, a cup, a glass. Um, in this case, it's a teapot, but it doesn't really matter. Next, solver parameters. From here, we can choose our simulation settings. So where do you want the simulation to start and end? In my case, I'm going full timeline, zero through to 100. We can specify, you know, start at 10. If you've got some kinematics beforehand, we can choose to do something before the simulation starts if you wanted to, for example. So if you want to simulate a tap turning on and then the flow starting, you would just start the flow after the tap had been turned. Simple. Leave those as default for the purpose of today but choose my liquid parameters. And from here, I'm gonna start with um, something quite loose. Why not? We'll go with beer. So we select beer and we choose to load the parameters. You have gotta make sure you press the load parameters button, otherwise it won't work. Once you've loaded the preset, we're literally gonna go and press play. If you've already placed uh, a simulation at that point in, in, in um, recently in Max, it will ask you if you want to actually restart it, but just press yes. And this will go away and it will do a simulation. Now, depending on the machine spec, your CPU, your GPU will depend on how long this is going to take. But literally, Max is gonna go step by step on my timeline, as you'll see happening now as I talk, and you can see that I start to have liquid forming on my screen. Depending on the preset, depends on what that liquid will look like. We've got something that's quite, you know, quite watery with beer, um, so it's gonna simulate quite quickly. But this is all live. I don't want to move it too much because I don't want to stress my machine whilst it's rendering. But if we just scroll down here and have a look at what's going on, you can see the liquid is reacting 
um, with and around my product, my teapot in this case. So you can see that it's hitting the ridge here. It's coming down towards the spout of this teapot and then the water is splitting into two different streams. And from there, we've got different levels of splash, different levels of build up, um, some kickback happening here over the top. And generally we're getting um, the kind of result that we'd expect, okay? And the longer we leave it, the more result that you'd get. But I'm not gonna let you sit here waiting for this to render. And actually, even if I was to let this go to 100, it doesn't make any difference now that it's going. It's just going to keep flowing and flowing. So I'm going to pause that simulation. With that simulation paused, I can scrub my timeline. There's only seven or eight frames there, so it's you know, not even half a second at that stage. But you can see, if I just press play, that that gives you the kind of simulation that you would expect to take a much longer period of time. It's doing exactly what you would expect it to do, and if I come in here and go to that point where we've got a build-up of material, get a bit closer and just go and press render. Yes, I have it set on Arnold, but I have no materials. You can see that that's given me a liquid object, almost like a mesh that we can then add a material to, add a texture to. It's all default for the purpose of this. There's no lights or materials in this scene. Um, if I come in and, uh, and just move that on ever so slightly, come back a little bit and render again, we should see a little bit more going on in and around the scene. And you can imagine if I put on a texture in there for that particular um, fluid, you would get a really nice look and feel. And again, there's a lot of tutorials out there in how to get those, uh, those liquid textures. If I changed my mind and said, well, actually, I want this to now work slightly differently, it's so quick. If I press stop here, I don't want that simulation anymore. Let's go back to the start. Um, and what we're going to do is I'm just going to change the teapot so that we have a different simulation um, control. And we're going to say that we don't want to use beer anymore. We want to use some chocolate or maybe something like honey, which is really quite claggy. Um, let's load those settings in and just press play. You will instantly see a different simulation, not just because I've moved the teapot, because I've changed the liquid options or the fluid parameters. So the flow of that, uh, that honey in this case is going to be very different to the flow of the beer. You'll get more of a, um, an initial build-up and then it will go quite stringy and you'll get something that forms more at the bottom rather than just be free-flowing. Again, dependent on the spec of your machine, um, how much RAM you've got, your CPU, your GPU, the time it takes is going to be different. But go and grab yourself um, some honey on toast. Go and grab yourself a cup of tea. Um, a slice of cake, whatever it is, and, and when you come back, that simulation will be done and ready for you to place um, your, your textures on, put it into your scene with your lighting to get your results. And again, for the purpose of this, we're just going to give that a few frames to run so that you can see the differencing results, and then we will move on and look at one final option with maybe something that's more putty-like, like some toothpaste, for example. Whether you want to simulate water flowing through a product, whether you want to simulate water reacting to a product, um, this simulation type gives you, you know, everything that you could need and is really accessible to use and really straightforward. I'm just gonna let this go up to one more. We'll let it go up to uh, six. You can hear and, and, and see that it's a lot slower with this type of simulation. There's a lot more going on and a lot more for my, uh, my CPU to handle. Um, but what we'll do there is we'll just take a stop. Again, I'll just scrub this just to show you what's going on. You've got a much slower build-up of, of material. But if I just put that there and hit render, we should have something that, whilst is not the right colour or the right texture, it's resembling you know, that, that kind of sticky, gooey-ness um, that honey has. So it's going to give you a, a lot more realistic result. Yes, it would look better with a nice texture on, but you get the general idea. Finally, let's just revert this um, back. So let's place uh, our teapot back straight. Uh, maybe let's go and uh, move our liquid to be uh, straight in the center of this teapot. And then we'll get some, um, some toothpaste to fall out of here. So use a pre preset. Let's go and choose toothpaste here, load it in, and then from there we can go and press play. 
let it do its thing, let it think about things for a little minute, and again, you're going to get from a preview perspective and certainly from an output perspective, a much different result. Think about squeezing a toothpaste. Um, if you squeezed it and let go, the toothpaste would just sit there depending on which brand you've got. You know, It's just going to sit there and, and, and not fall off unless you get a certain amount. This is going to work in the same way. It's going to treat that toothpaste um, from a simulation perspective in the same way that it would in reality. So you're likely going to get clumps of um, visible material, if you like, coming down. And then when it hits, it's going to kind of worm rather than spreading out like liquid does. So again, like last time, we're just going to give this a few seconds just to um, hopefully get to the point where it touches the top of that teapot. And again, it gives you a different scenario or a different example of just some of these out of the box um, um, workflows that, you know, to, to do something like this before, just it, it would be so, not difficult, but time consuming to get a result that you would be happy with. Whereas now, you can pretty quickly do a quick simulation, wait a handful of frames. Yeah, that looks about right. That's the kind of result that I'm looking for. Go in and play with some of the, um, some of the, the scaling in here. Um, the velocity, the, the viscosity, so on and so forth, and, and see if it's giving you the kind of result that you would expect. And off the back of that, you can then decide whether to let it run or, or not, as the case may be. So let's just have a little look around what's going on. So I suspect what's happening here is the toothpaste is hitting the top of this, and it's all going to start building up. So you'll probably see this start to expand outwards, almost like some putty. Um, so I suspect every one of these is just going to get a little bit wider and a little bit wider and a little bit wider and eventually you'll sort of see that, uh, that worming effect come into play. Whether we've got enough time to let it run today and get to that point, we'll soon find out. Again, we're only 10 frames into a, an animation. If you work on 25 frames per second, that's not too far off uh, half a second, but um, not very long, so we can leave it a little bit longer. And then what we'll do is we will pause it there, get a little bit closer, and we'll hit the render button. Again, not to show you anything with a particular texture uh, or a particular look and finish, but just to show you what's happening with that, uh, with that material and show you the differences or, or, or changes in results that you get with these different uh, templates set. And literally, that's kind of what I wanted to show you. It's quick, it's easy, it's kind of akin to um, cloth simulation now in that it's so quick to do. Um, you know, it's no longer reserved for those power users or super users of Macs. Anyone can come in here and start doing those simulations. So um, I hope that's been useful. I hope that gets you on your way. Any questions, don't hesitate to get in touch. And we will catch you next time. Thank you very much.